Hello, it's So from TPH Reading, because today we're going to talk about reading. <sighs> Book two, I'm coming for you. Jokes aside, I thought it would be fun if I sat down and shared with you guys some of the books that I've been reading for my classes. Normally, I love to read. I'm a big reader, but unfortunately, during the semester, I simply don't have a lot of time to read and enjoy like fiction books or like trashy romance novels that I like unironically love. So I thought it would be nice to sit down and just talk with you guys about the books that I have been reading. And yes, most of these are for class, but I feel like some of you guys might be interested in reading these just for fun. So without further ado, let's begin. Just for some background information, I'm a biology and medical anthropology major. So most of the books that I have here are mainly about medical anthropology, as well as like race, gender, class, and environment, which is another class that I'm taking right now. So these first two books are related to medical anthropology. However, these are what I would categorize as like introductory books that anyone without any prior knowledge of anthropology could read and gain a lot of information out of. So this one is Medical Apartheid by Harriet A. Washington, and this one is called Dying of Whiteness by Jonathan Metzl. There's also a third book that I really like. It's called In Flame by Marianne Patel, but I'm currently lending my copy to one of my professors, so I don't have the physical copy with me. These three books, and Inflamed here, I guess, basically go into like the health inequities in the United States. Medical apartheid primarily goes into medical experimentation on Black Americans from the colonial times to the present. So that includes like the development and experimentation of gynecology on Black slave women, the Tuskegee syphilis study, and other like cases of racism, and describes essentially an apartheid of healthcare between white and Black Americans. I think this is a really like enlightening book that is really designed for anyone to read. Like it's written in a very like accessible language. And I find that this is fascinating even for non-medical anthropology readers. And uh, I, I just think that this is such an important book to read, especially if you're interested in anything related to healthcare or the medical field, because this really goes into detail of like medical racism and how it's perpetuated both structurally, institutionally, and like on an individual level. So I think this is a really, really good book to start off with. And out of the three books that I like originally started out with, this is the one I would highly recommend to anyone. The second one, Dying of Whiteness might be more interesting for people who have more of like a political science leaning, but essentially this is a book analyzing why conservative white Americans, particularly in the South, tend to vote for conservative politicians, even though they're voting for policies that don't actually benefit them, especially in terms of healthcare. So it's really interesting and goes into how racial resentment like leads to these political decisions and why people are literally dying of whiteness. Essentially, their choice and their commitment to racism and racial resentment and how that leads to their own health inequity. So this is a really fascinating look into white America, especially like lower socioeconomic status, like white Americans. And I think there's like, just a lot of fascinating stuff, including like an analysis of like the cost reason that Republicans tend to use to vote and sort of argue against healthcare laws. So this is just very interesting, especially for people who are more into politics. The third book, again, I don't have the hard copy with me, but Inflamed, I think is sort of the hardest book to get into out of the three that I've introduced to you guys mostly because you kind of need to like have an understanding and willingness to accept like reform and reconstruction of like the American healthcare system as we currently know it today. So Inflamed really goes into how we can decolonize medicine and make it accessible. And it uses a lot of like indigenous anecdotes and indigenous knowledge as well as like environmental like case studies to create an overarching picture of how like colonialism is affecting medicine today and how it's like deeply rooted in our own structural biases and how we can address it for the future. So it's a little bit more on like the radical side in terms of like it's really advocating for like a complete like dismantling and rebuilding of the healthcare system as we know it today and these ideas of decolonization might be hard to grasp if you don't have like 
a little bit more like background knowledge on it but if you're interested in like decolonization on indigenous medicine traditional knowledge as well as environmental studies this might be a really interesting book for you to read now these three are books that I would recommend anthropology majors to read because these are what I classify as ethnographies books written by anthropologists after a deep ethnographic study. So they reference a lot of theory, a lot of like fieldwork observations, and they reference a lot of like other like authors and other works. So if you don't have like a, like a previous literary background on these kinds of theories, they may be harder to read, especially these two, because these two subvert the typical expectations for ethnographic writing. So if you're an anthropologist or a sociologist, I would highly recommend reading these of course if you're not an anthropologist feel free to read these like I'm not trying to gatekeep these I'm just like practicing this saying that these are a little bit more academic and a little harder to read than books like these this first book is called Birthing the Nation by Rhoda Ann Kanane. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing any of the authors wrong, but Birthing the Nation primarily looks into the family planning and reproductive strategies of Palestinian women in Israel. And I find this book to be so fascinating because it goes into like state propaganda and Zionist propaganda fueling like family planning decisions and how people approach marriage, sex, relationships, and having children. And there's a lot of like interesting like dialogue and like conversations about like the modern body, the modern female body, how children are conceived, how fertility is conceived, and how like Palestinian women, especially Palestinian women in Israel, like particularly I think the observation region was the Galilee. It's just so fascinating to read. And regardless of where you stand on the Israel-Palestine conflict, I think that this book is so fascinating to read. And if you don't know anything about the Israel-Palestine conflict, you should do some research. It's actually a pretty important issue that I think we should all know more about. And I'm not here to lecture you on any politics. I just think this is a really fascinating book to read on the topic. And also if you're interested in reproductive rights, if you're interested in like sort of like things regarding the female body, family planning, things like that, this would be a really good book for you. The Body Multiple Ontology and Medical Practice by Anne-Marie Moll is very theory based. It's like very, very theory based, but essentially it talks about the body multiple and the multiplicities of disease and the experience of disease. And particularly like Anne-Marie Mole uses like the case study of atherosclerosis in a hospital in the Netherlands to describe this occurrence of multiplicities in the body. And it's just so fascinating because this book goes into like how patients perceive their disease, how different departments view a disease, and how that all like morphs into like this multiple levels of experience realities within a single disease. However, this book is kind of hard to read. The formatting is very different in that you have like your traditional ethnographic writing with thick description on the top and then you have a literature review and all of these theories on the bottom and the entire book is split up like that. It's like two books in one book. So I'm not going to tell you how to read it because I think the way you purposely choose to read this book also affects the way you absorb the information in this book but I just think this is like a very academic take on disease which is fascinating like not to say that an academic take on medicine isn't bad it's just like hard to read and like you really have to like sort of get into it and then once you finish the book then you like get a wider and broader understanding of the topic that this author is talking about epidemic illusions on the coloniality of global public medicine by eugene t richardson is such a fun book to read. Richardson primarily uses carnivality to really explore like the deep rooted colonialism within the way we practice global public health. And you can really see it in every like chapter or read descriptions as he puts it into his writing. He really subverts typical expected anthropological writing in order to make a point about how academia and global public health are deeply rooted in these like institutions of coloniality. It's really fascinating. It talks about like how big data and epidemiology are often used to mask 
how institutions reproduce colonialism, as well as like how the Ebola epidemic evolved and how like the World Health Organization and other organizations responded to it. So it's just a really fascinating book. And Richardson has a lot to say within very few pages. So this is a quick read, a very entertaining read, but again, especially like the chapter that references the Nasirema, like I think you would have to be an anthropologist or at least have some background knowledge of the rights of the Nasirema in order to like understand that particular chapter. Very cool book, but again, very like, <laughs> it's like a funny book for anthropologists, if that makes sense. But if you want to read it, 10 out of 10. There's also a really good foreword by Paul Farmer. Paul Farmer, incredible guy. I'm so sad he passed away recently, but if you're also interested in like global health, public health, medical anthropology, highly recommend Paul Farmer's works as well. These are books I had to read for class, but books I really didn't enjoy <laughs> for different reasons. The first one is called Blood and Guts by Roy Porter. This is a short history of medicine and it goes into like the history of biomedicine, how like surgeries, hospitals, and medicine in modern society were established. And overall, I think this is a really good book for people who don't know anything about biomedicine or start, but this is very clearly like a Western centric view on medicine and doesn't really incorporate a lot of ideas of traditional medicine or the contributions that like the Middle Eastern scholars have contributed to medicine, particularly like during the dark ages when Europe was literally a hellhole of like, religion. <laughs> Not saying that religion is bad, I'm just saying in the dark ages they really believed in uh, prayer instead of uh, pathology. <laughs> it's a fine book, I just think it's limited in scope and if you want like a more broad like nuanced view of biomedicine, I personally think that books like Medical Apartheid are a much better read than this one. And then the second book in this category is Making PCR by Paul Rabinow. Paul Rabinow is a super famous sociologist, not to like dunk on his work, but I just wasn't interested in the concept or like the production of this book. Essentially, this book goes into the culture and the behind the scenes of what went on in Cetus, a biotechnology startup company. Is it Cetus? Cetus? But anyways, it's basically looking into the behind the scenes of this biotech startup company and how the technique of PCR was developed. And it, it just talks a lot about like scientists, how science is funded in the academic sphere versus a startup. and. I guess if you're interested in like science startups, this could be interesting, but to me, this was like kind of dry. <laughs> and I'm saying this as a bio and anthropology major, like it's kind of dry, but it does give a really interesting insight into the culture of science and biotechnology if you've never been in those spheres before. So this could be interesting to you, but not interesting for me. For the final three books, I'm lumping them into the same category because they're all autobiographies of a sort and they're all for the same class. This is for the class Race, Gender, Class, and Environment. And this class is an English environmental and socio-anthropology class that delves into how these four forces shape author's life narrative and the power of storytelling to sort of kickstart and revolutionize social movements. So the first book is Angela Davis's autobiography by Angela Davis. There is a newer version of this autobiography with a new preface written by Angela Davis, I believe in like 2020, 2021. So I have the old edition, but I would highly recommend like trying to get your hands on the new edition because I find that preface that she wrote recently to be really enlightening for the rest of the book. But Angela Davis's autobiography, Audre Lorde's Cancer Journals, and The Home Place by Drew J. Lanham. First off, Angela Davis's autobiography is sort of a recount of how she was arrested and her trial, but I think this is a really interesting insight into the prison industrial complex as well as how like the built environment really influences the way people experience things in prison. Um, it's a really good analysis of carcerality and I find that it goes a lot into like racial relationships and it's just a really, really good book and I highly suggest reading it. I will say she wrote this when she was like 20? 
23. She wrote this when she was young and she's continued her activism work since. So if you want like more like current day like examples of Angela Davis's work, she does a lot of really great interviews, writes tons of articles, has a lot of like papers out there. So just in general, Angela Davis's work and her writing impeccable. I love it. Audre Lorde's Cancer Journals. This is the quickest read out of all of the books, but essentially it goes into Audre Lorde's experience with breast cancer and mastectomy. And I find that this is a really interesting, like intersectional view on the body, on disease, and what it means to be Black female lesbian. And it just, it's short, but it's extremely powerful despite its shortness. My favorite chapter is, well, I have two favorite chapters in here. My first favorite chapter is Breast Cancer, A Black Lesbian Feminist Experience. And then my other favorite chapter is Breast Cancer, Power versus Prosthesis. I mean, there's like only three chapters in this book. So it's like, they're the two out of the three chapters that I love. But I find those chapters to be so moving and again if you're interested in the medical field if you're interested in like intersectional work highly highly recommend this book finally the home place this is a really great book if you're interested in biology drew j lanham is an ornithologist and in this book he explores how like race and his experience of race influence his journey as a black scientist he's an ornithologist he has like all of these incredible stories about where he grew up and the description of the environment and the birds and the metaphors that he uses it it's so beautiful I also listened to a podcast by Dr. Lanham and it was about like birds and how his experience with race and his experience with science really led him to develop the perspective that he has currently. And it's just incredible, incredible. I'll try to find the podcast and link it in the description down below, but it's a really, really good book. So these are the books that I've had to read for class, my quick mini review of them and whether or not I recommend them. I hope this was sort of like an interesting insight into what I'm learning in class right now as well as like the kinds of books that I'm reading and the kind of materials that I'm learning from. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my content creation, I do have my Patreon link down below, but no worries, no pressure to support if you don't have the means to. And as always, like hit the bell for notifications whenever I post. I try to post every other Wednesday at 10 a.m. EST. I hope to see you in the next video. And until then, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.